Hello everyone, this is 3DX and in today's video I'm going to be creating a palm tree prop here using my uh, then later ZBrush and then also I'm going to be using Substance Painter for it and uh, for the creation of trees usually you can use uh, many different techniques to do it um, in this case I'm going to be using one which is to use an alpha for the actual leaves and a high poly model that it's baked on that alpha and I'm going to be using ZBrush for that but I'm also going to model the high poly base model in Maya and then for the actual tree shape I'm going to use a curve and then just extrude that along uh, using a NURB circle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the top so that it's a lot skinnier than the bottom and that's going to be my low poly model like I said there are different ways to make trees and in this case I decided to use the mash system in Maya to pretty much extrude a shape along a curve I did have to create a new curve uh, because the one that I initially created uh, was not working because I created it I believe from the top to bottom uh, but for what I needed here in this case I actually needed it to be created from bottom to top so I made a new curve and then I matched I made sure that it matched the other one and then that shape which I uh, pretty much duplicated along the curve is what I'm going to use for the high poly model so I'm just going to sculpt that a little bit in ZBrush and like I said typically for trees you can create you can go the route of creating a tileable texture for the for the wood parts and then you could also create the leaves uh, in something like Substance Designer for example which is how a lot of people do it sometimes and even I have done that in the past as well but in this case I wanted to show uh, just one of the ways in which you can do this which is by poly modeling it and uh, assigning pretty much unique UVs to it without going with the route of using a tileable texture or anything like that which is a perfectly a perfectly valid way to do it of course but in this case I just wanted it to be somewhat unique I also want the base of the tree to be slightly darker than the top which is why I decided not to go with a tileable texture you could still do that with a tileable texture but you would have to do um, some things in like a game engine using vertex colors or something like that to get the base to be darker and then for the UVs it's pretty much mostly planar maps and unfolds and I'm going to use a tool for renaming uh, if you guys are interested in that too there's a link in the video description pretty much use it for renaming objects uh, just makes it really easy obviously you can still do that within Maya as well and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place all the individual leaves on top of the tree um, just so that when I bake in Substance Painter I can actually see what it's actually going to look like on the model and not just have the exploded mesh uh, where I won't be able to really tell what it's really looking like as a final model and all these pieces that I uh, place uh, manually I just combine them and I offset the UVs as well just so that it bakes better or that it bakes because sometimes when you have overlapping UVs doesn't really bake um, in Substance Painter that doesn't happen all the time but I always do it just in case And then for the high poly I'm just going to duplicate some of the pieces and I'm also going to make sure that 
the low poly models share the same names as the high poly. And then in ZBrush, I'm just going to just quickly do a little bit of sculpting. I'm not going to go too overboard with it. I'm just going to add uh, just a little bit of sculpt to the leaves so that there's something there and they're not just completely flat. And for that, I'm going to use mainly the uh, dam standard. And then just kind of soften it up a little bit as well. And like I said, you could make leaves in something like Substance uh, Designer. Just kind of procedurally make them. Or I think for stylized, it usually looks pretty good when you sculpt them. And then for everything else, I'm just going to use the Trim Dynamic tool. Just to soften up the edges so that they're not too sharp because if they're too sharp, they're not going to read very well uh, when I bake the normal map. So I want to have just a little bit of flatness to them. Otherwise, uh, when I bake in normal map, it's just going to look like a line on it if it even shows up. So something to keep in mind. So this is going to be baked onto a relatively flat surface. And for the top part, I'm just going to use an alpha for it. Uh, this is not going to be uh, too noticeable since it's going to be covered by the coconuts and the leaves. Then I'm going to use a special tool for adding ID maps. Again, if you're interested in that tool, there's a link in the video description. But I, I use it for ID maps mainly. And the reason I'm going to use an ID map here is because I want to um, use an alpha on the leaves. So I don't want them to be you know, fully opaque and I want them I want some parts of it to be transparent. And for the texture in Substance Painter, I'm going to use uh, the 3DX stylized material. Once again, that's also in the video description. But mainly I'm just gonna apply a few colors to this. And I'm also going to add a few more layers to make this more interesting. And I'll just use the material right away and then call it a day. The material itself is pretty good for getting you started, but I always think, also think that you have to um, add a few more layers just to bring it to what you really want. So for the alpha, the, the ID map was not as close as I was hoping. So I kind of manually painted away some of the, um, some of the edges on the leaves. Because I didn't want to, I did not want them to look too thick, so I'm just gonna paint it those away. And that's mainly because the the alpha ID map was not completely tight. And then I'm just gonna add a bit of a gradient to the base of the tree, so that the bottom is just slightly darker. I think that helps to ground it a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing with the leaves, but I'm going to make it so that the interior of the leaves is just a slightly darker than the um, rest. This is also just to give it more visual interest and so that it doesn't look completely flat. So I'm going to keep doing that and I'm also going to add some edge highlight as well for the leaves. Once again, just to make them look a little bit more interesting. This is something that you have to kind of just play around with until you get something that looks good. So there's a lot of trial and error, obviously, as, it always, as there always is with the texture in something. And mainly because every model is different, obviously. So you always have to try different things for different models. I also added a layer for the curvature just to make it a little bit sharper. Or so that the curves come out a little bit more. But anyway, here's what it looks like in Marmoset Toolback with the render. And uh, if you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new, make sure you sub to the channel. And I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Would you like to learn how to transform this cube into something cool, like a character or this room? I recently put together an intro to 3D modeling course 
which shows you all the steps needed to do just that. This is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to cover everything. So click the link below now to get more details. Just want to let you know this course is for total beginners, so you don't need any prior experience. I cover all the steps from getting started with the software to creating cool props. Like I said earlier, this is a short video, so click the link below now to get more info about the course and get started today.